buzzing stocks from this sector. One of them is Suzla on Energy. The stock has surged 30% in November, is up over 270% this year so far, and it's also entered the MSCI Standard Index. To discuss more on the company's business momentum, we have Girish Tanti, who's the vice chairman at Suzlon, and Himanshu Modi, the chief financial officer at the Suzlon Group. So both gentlemen join us now. Uh, gentlemen, morning to uh, both of you. Girish, I want to start with you first, you know, because there is this whole COP28, this um, discussion on the chatter on green financing has picked up a lot as well. Are you hopeful that we can fast track this energy transition before 2030? And what are the gaps that still exist in the system, uh, which could perhaps be a hindrance for the, uh, you know, in this whole uh, transition uh, progress. Yeah, good morning. I think, uh, you know, today if we see across the world, uh, I think there is a more convergence uh, at its peak in terms of climate change as an issue globally. And I think with that, uh, the energy transition plans for, uh, you know, across the world, I think the alignment between governments uh, on setting up their green transition goals is at peak right now. We are also seeing increasingly, you know, a huge amount of uh, ESG funding that is reaching out uh, in this space. And I think uh, as the time is, uh, you know, over the time we have been seeing that the cost curve for renewable energy uh, supply is also going down. Uh, these factors combine themselves uh, in bringing a situation where I think transition to green energy is getting speeded up. Um, we also have Himanshu Modi, who's the CFO of the company, joining us now. Himanshu, uh, there has been a big turnaround for the company as well, right? You had that successful rights issue, you've reduced your debt, you're, you're sitting on a very strong tendering opportunity. Uh, your order book currently is at 1.6 gigawatts as of September. Can you tell us what is the kind of order visibility you have from here on, if you can give us the numbers, and what is the kind of revenue growth that you're looking at? So, hi. Uh, as you rightly said, we have about 1.6 gigawatts of confirmed orders uh, with us. Uh, and that order book is likely to be executed over the next few quarters. Uh, we also have a very strong order pipeline, uh, which we are in advanced stages of negotiation um, currently. Of course, I'm not at liberty to reveal numbers at this stage. Um, uh, you know, we will make those relevant announcements uh, as and when we uh, convert that pipeline into uh, confirmed orders. Uh, but uh, uh, all in all, uh, I mean, you know, the industry uh, uh, from tailwind's perspective uh, looks quite promising. Uh, having said that, uh, yes, there are certain uh, challenges on ground which remain uh, with regards to project execution, uh, power evacuation, etc. But I think uh, those will get ironed out um, over a period of time. Uh, from, of course, uh, financially, uh, you know, the company is in a very, very good shape now compared to the <clears throat> last few years. Uh, as you rightly said, we've done a good um, a rights issue last year, uh, followed up with the QIP, uh, as a result of which uh, we are sitting on a net cash of about 600 crores um, in the company as of 30th right. September. Uh, so that puts us in a good position to execute the order book uh, that we have. Mm. You know, uh, morning, uh, gentlemen, uh, Girish and Himanshu uh, Prashant here. And I just want to congratulate both of you. I mean, you know, you guys have been the classic turnaround story. They say turnarounds rarely turn. Uh, but I think with the case of Suzlon, we can make an exception uh, because, uh, you know, it's, it, it has turned on how. Uh, and it's in the right space. It's got the tailwinds, etc. Girish, but uh, since we don't get the opportunity to speak with you very often, what's, what's next uh, for Suzlon? You know, the big picture story is 10 gigawatts of ordering, as Himanshu has been telling us here on the channel uh, in our many interactions. 10 gigawatts of ordering every year, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, you, uh, before the crisis, etc., uh, used to have a 25-30% market share of the uh, order, or the, or the uh, sort of orders put out. So, you probably get back to that. Uh, is that kind of the steady state roadmap from here? We should uh, watch out for Suzlon? Or uh, are there other plans to afford? Uh, what's, what's the thought process? Yeah, hi. Good morning. I think, uh, you know, if you see today, I think... Uh, you know, with the target set for our country by our Prime Minister, a very bold target of 50% of renewables by 2030 and, you know, net zero by 2070. I think this has set out a clear roadmap for growth of renewable energy in our country. And, I, and we are seeing across the Indian inks, you know, adoption of uh, renewable energy in a very fast way, uh, setting out their own uh, renewable energy targets and net zero targets. 
I think with this, uh, you know, policy framework in place, uh, the demand side also getting uh, speeded up. And I think the kind of work that government is doing today on uh, uh, debottlenecking the implementation, be it on new grid infrastructure, uh, policy implementation at a, at a ground level and all those things. I think with that, we are seeing that, uh, you know, the road to go to green uh, uh, for everyone is becoming much smoother on that ground. And I think we being one of the key players in this industry um, and, uh, you know, we are continuously focused on our technology developments and uh, making sure that uh, as a country, we are very well equipped. And uh, also over the last 30 years, we've developed a very strong ecosystem across the country on developing MSME segment and uh, making sure that we are, you know, developing products with an Atman Nirbhar focus. So Make in India is a very strong element of what we do. And I think uh, as the markets grow, definitely, you know, Suzon will kind of make sure that uh, we continue to play an important role in this. All right. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. And uh, thanks so much for joining in here on CNBC TV 18. You know, your order book is around 1.6 gigawatts. Uh, if you could tell us by when will all of this be executed, point number one. And point number two, uh, you know, the new orders that are coming in, what's the time horizon that it actually gets uh, executed? The reason I ask you is because some part of the market is a little bit worried that the new orders that are coming in, delivery is getting pushed back a little bit. Could you clarify on that aspect? Sure. So, of the 1.6 gigawatts, uh, you know, in the... Uh, H1 of this financial year, we did about 270 megawatts of uh, yes. supplies uh, as a company. Um, whereas commissioning in terms of new capacity addition in the H1 was a little less than 500 megawatts. Uh, so that's about one third of the capacity on the wind side that uh, the country added in the first half. Uh, so far as the 1.6 gigawatt is concerned, uh, I th you know, the delivery schedule right now is, you know, over the next, I would say, spread out uh, or close to about six to seven quarters. Um, uh, you know, there could be, as I said, you know, supply uh, is uh, is the easy part. Uh, there are certain challenges that ex uh, exist on the ground, but those are getting ironed out. Uh, and, you know, there, those may cause a few de uh, delays of few weeks here and there. But uh, I don't think, uh, you know, that makes any significant difference from the project visibility. Uh, in terms of timelines, uh, you know, depends on the project size. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, sort of a mid-scale project size uh, could take anywhere between 18 to 24 months uh, to execute right from, um, you know, contract signing uh, up to commissioning. Uh, but that depends on the uh, size of the project and the site conditions and the readiness of the power evacuation. Hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Got that. Uh, Girish, I wanted your thoughts on the divestment plans. The last time you had told us that, or your company had told us, that you've identified a few non-core assets for divestment. Just trying to understand, A, what is the kind of timeline that you're looking at for this divestment process and what's the quantum of non-core assets that you're looking to sell? Yeah, so, uh, you know, yes, we had identified a couple of non-core assets about a year back, uh, you know, when the uh, balance sheet had a certain leverage on the books. Um, uh, given the turnaround uh, that we've seen financially and uh, a robust cash position, uh, we will be very selective uh, on divesting the non-core assets. Uh, you know, one of which, of course... the number, the amount uh, that you're going to divest? It's so difficult for me to give you a number, but uh, clearly, uh, you know, from a, uh, any real estate that we have on the books, uh, we are quite focused on uh, monetizing those. Uh, and, you know, of course, uh, one of our subsidiaries, we continue to uh, keep that under our belt uh, for a certain time uh, because... Uh, given the visibility that we are seeing in the industry and the turnaround, it becomes uh, uh, a core asset and uh, there is no compulsion from a financial perspective uh, for the company to look at uh, divesting those uh, currently. Okay. All right. Final question before I let you all go. You know, last time around when we quizzed you all, you all said the company is not on the block. So that was good clarity that we got in. And now you are making moves in the right direction, whether it's with regard to reducing debt, whether it's with regard to the ramping up of the order book or even deep pledging all the holding. But the promoter holding is only around 14%. Is there any plan that the promoter wants to take a bigger uh, chunk in the company, point number one? And what about Mr. Dilip Shanghi's uh, stake out there? What's what's the latest on that front? Yes, yeah, so I think, uh, you know, uh, the Sanghi family continues to remain one of the key and important uh, 
shareholder of the company. And I think, uh, as we have seen in the statement released by uh, Mr. Dilip Sangri or himself, uh, in terms of the uh, outlook for the industry as well as the company, they continue to remain a good uh, support to the company in the growth from here. So I think uh, business is as usual, nothing has changed otherwise, and we continue to kind of work as a partner to grow the enterprise. So that's on track. Uh, as far as promoter holding is concerned, I think, uh, you know, we kind of continue to endeavor to make sure that uh, whatever possible we can do in that space, uh, the efforts are always there to see what we can do in that space, but no immediate plans of any change in holding structure at this point in time. All right, uh, uh, Girish, great to have you with us here and uh, come back again. Uh, thank you for your time. Himanshu, it's always great to speak with you. Appreciate you joining in here on CNBC TV 18. Thanks very much. So, you know, uh, done very, very well. 50,000 crores, by the way, in market capitalization, uh, Suzlon, uh, after the spectacular 2023 it's had. We'll take a very quick